Okay. So the pass the beanbag game is one that you will use in fourth grade and fifth grade harmonica. Um, and what you'll want to do is first get them into groups of two or three, and then you'll need enough beanbags for each group to have one to pass between them. Um, some teachers will already, you can ask them, do you already have partners set up, or do you have, sometimes they have like study groups that are groups of three already. Um, usually those groups work really well together, but it just depends on how much chaos you want and, and how well you know the teacher and all of that. So get them into their groups of two or three, and then each group gets a bean bag. And I even, as I'm handing out the bean bags, I start singing the song so they can start getting that song in their head before they play. Um, you can, if you want, put on the CD, the Pass the Bean Bag, as you're handing it out or as you're singing it. You don't always have to wait to the end of the lesson to use that. If you feel more comfortable having something in the background besides just your own voice, you can use that anytime. Um, so the song goes like this. Pass the bean bag to your partner, don't you let it drop. Try to get have the bean bag back before the music stops. Um, so what they're going to do is have that bean bag. You can have them sitting on the ground, or you can have them standing. I always, anytime I use bean bags, I always say, um, we never throw our bean bag. If I see a bean bag being thrown, you will immediately lose it. I don't give any warnings with with bean bags. It's you have your instruction at the beginning, and then after that, you're old enough, right, to be responsible. So if I see a bean bag being thrown, you'll lose it, and then when I see you're ready for it, I'll give it back to you. Um, so they're in their partner, they have their beanbag, and they're passing it back and forth. I don't want to have, or, not that one. Try to, Try to have the beanbag back before the music stops. Whoever has the beanbag gets to choose how they're going to pass it the next time. So the first time you're just passing with hands, the next time they could pass using their elbows, or they could pass it through their legs. Or, you know, they can come up with however they want to do that. And then you play that for five or ten minutes. Um, when you see that it's getting kind of crazy, that's usually when I stop the game. And I shake my tambourine or do something to get everybody. And then I collect those bean bags, and then we're ready to learn it on harmonica. In fourth grade, um, they're learning chords on harmonica. And the way we teach that is with three zones. And so you can put this up on your Elmo. You could... Put that on the elbow before you even hand out harmonicas um, so that you can practice with them, blowing out, drawing in. What do we do when we see the red arrow? And they can practice doing. And then you can go through the song doing that. And then. Um, and then you can say, harmonica's up. Let's try this. We're going to play in zone C. Which number of holes are we going to draw into if it's zone C? Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, everybody, try zone C for me. We're going to play it four times. One, two, ready, play. One, two, three, four. Harmonica's down. What did you notice about that sound? It's high. It was high. How did that sound, because they'll already have learned B and A, how did that sound compare to the other zones? They pick up the zone thing really fast. They'll have it down. Um, okay, so now we're going to try and play our song into zone C. Harmonica's up. And we're going to blow out first. One, two, ready, play. Blow, blow. on top. Oh. Okay. Makes it easier for the fourth graders. Um, I just, I teach them to hold their harmonica like this. Later on they can learn the proper way to hold it is kind of like with cupping this so that they can do vibrato and stuff, but for our purposes with only four lessons, 
just holding it like that. So how do you works. know if you're playing in the right zone and not overlapping to another one? It it doesn't. That's what's great about harmonica. Oh, if good. they just are kind of in that area of the harmonica, that zone C, zone B is kind of in the middle. Zone A is at the bottom. And so they'll have learned A, B, and C before this point. Okay, so when you're teaching um, harmonica chords, we divide the harmonica up into three zones. And when they hold their harmonica, the numbers are facing the ceiling. Their name is written on the bottom, facing the ground. And they can just put their thumbs, their fingers like this, and that'll give them a good position. And then I still tell them fish lips because that seals the air and makes it go through and then they don't run out of air as fast because it's all their air is going straight into the harmonica. So I have them have their harmonicas down at this point and I say, I'm going to play zone A. What does that sound like to you? What if I draw in on zone A? What does that sound like? I'm going to usually say a train or something like that. Okay, now if I play zone B. Which one was lower or higher? Zone A. Zone B. That's another thing you can do with them. Zone C is whole 7, 8, and 9. You can have them guess before you play. Yeah. What's it going to sound like? Yeah, sometimes you can mm -hmm. guess. Um, I can't remember if I have that in one of the lessons. It might be one of the games. Oh, it is. Yeah. It is, where you turn around. Mm -hmm. um, so fish lips will help. And I really, when I draw in, I really have to use this. Like, if you just use your lungs, it, you don't have enough to even hold it for longer than like one beat. But if you use your this part of your body, fill up that balloon, then you can do like four in a row if you need to do four notes.